this thing rolling. When we, uh, okay. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to take a little mental recapping on my part. Um, when we had last left our heroes, they had arrived in the city of Shane's Cross and had not quite got their, their boot in all the way into the mud, but um, it certainly uh, taken a bit of the measure of the city, uh, landed on the landing field, uh, the landing fields of the, of the Lilac, of Lilacs East, um, on the airships that ferry people back and forth up to the city. Kind of gotten further into, I feel like, was it? Eventually you'd ended up kind of in the heading in the general direction of the, uh, the black web by virtue of it yeah. being like the, the market area and whatnot. And based on, uh, Ro or, uh, uh, Rowan's sort of predictions seems to astrology. Well, he seemed to be of the, imp in the, imp of the impression that it was somewhere sort of, Merchanty temple districty feeling that he had gotten that that was where um, some hijinks were going on, you know, based on sort of his visions or or imagery or or, or something. His his should I say visions? Was it really kind of a vision, or is it more like you know signs in your astrology that my enemy lies within? The place of the gods is it is it that uh, kind of a thing or more of a visiony kind of a thing? Uh, signs and astrology. Signs and astrology. So, um, you know, based on that, it's like well, probably temple district. Let's head towards the temple district. Let's head, you know, that general direction. Which temple district lies? Uh, let's just say the border between the mer mercantile district and the trading district and the temple district is very permeable. Uh, nigh indistinguishable um while in that area taking a read of the area uh rowan had kind of opened his senses up and lots of stuff I, i'm a, actually the way i summed it up in the write-up i think is probably the best way and the most concise and less least time consuming way to do that so i'm gonna uh, jump to that because it was probably best do, 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 do. Rowan did look closely got three questions uh, the people of the city are being filled with distrust of their fellow sapients with the worst 10% they seem to be fully in thrall sort of dominated by a malign will uh, ranging from you know, shall immediately attack us if it if if given half an excuse to just totally normal person that isn't affected at all. Um, it's a spectrum. Um, <laughs> the more tainted seem especially unfriendly, specifically to Rowan, not because of who he is, but what he is. Um, so chalk that up to some influence that doesn't like harbingers very much, which is a little weird. Um, whoever's doing this is deeply obfuscating their influence and the direct effect on the people. Um, had Rowan not rolled any any better than he had, had Rowan not well, rolled as well as he did, let's put that a different way, um, he would have probably just attributed this to general nastiness of spirit, um, the inevitable corruption of capitalism, I don't know. Uh, or just magical effect and radiation from living full time around crystals big enough to float the city. Um, and it does, in fact, seem to be that the effect uh, that sort of like the that's kind of the camouflage that they were going for is like, oh, if, there, if anybody does detect that anything is amiss with these people's spirits, they're going to assume it was the it's basically the effect of living on the island in the city. Um, he thinks not. Uh, so if this team's been around for a while, there's a pretty good chance it's spread out away from the city simply because uh, this it seems to be a spreadable, contractable thing. Uh, 
Side note, Rowan can probably gather up influence over others and highly obscured, you know, a talent towards highly obscuring their abilities and maybe get a good idea of who might be capable of something like this, given the opportunity to uh, ask the question, sort of. Um, Virens had kind of posed additionally, like if this is what's going on in the city, what are the leader? What are the leaders of the city doing about it? And we sort of cut to a scene in <laughs> the mayoral solarium with the mayor and sort of our whispering corrupter person that has been we've seen in our our flashbacks, as well as Eki of Bornair and Sifle of uh, of the Ohir, and also apparently the uh, Overlord herself, um, as they talked about, you know, what they needed to be on about, and the Overlord assured them that these, you know, this rowing green hand being in the city was going to be no problem whatsoever. Pay no, pay them to mind. We have other important things to do, and then set them about their tasks. Um, in ver in various directions uh, about the city. So the answer to Viren's question, what, the, what is the leadership doing about this, is sort of coming on booted feet toward them when the, not the city guards, but like literally the mayoral honor guard um, is, is, you know, comes marching through the city streets headed their direction. Um, so the idea that um, <clears throat> these guys are sort of delivering the answer by virtue of really clearly being affected by this uh, taint in a very severe and, and really not so subtle manner uh, and thus providing clues. Um, Rowan had already figured out that pulling the power out of the city's emerald hearts probably one of the Overlord's current plans. He's also twigged to the fact that the Overlord is petty and vindictive, so there's also probably something going on here with subjugating and humiliating the people of Chains Crossing because there's some history there. Uh, also, aside, so something's going on with the city populace. Done. They're probably going to do something to the city's power source itself. Check. Guards are coming, which gives you a direction as to who, you know, where to where to investigate further with regards to the whole taint on the people. The power in the center of the city is pretty well documented, so you know where to go there. And also, completely unrelated to either of those things, probably, is the fact that Wynn has spotted what is probably sign of another O'Hear in the city, in that the sort of circling, diving, annoying birds are not circling, diving, and annoying him but seem to be clustered uh, elsewhere in the skies above the city and, <laughs> and might indicate sign that uh, that Sifle is about um, and could be oh, that's beautiful. found. And <laughs> it was really, well, and it... Kerbass looks over at Wynn and says, you're slipping. <laughs> There's, um, and actually, I... Uh, tip of the hat to I feel like I can't distinctly recall what how it all can it sort of came together but uh, uh, James had kind of put something out there that the reason that the O'Hare had sort of gotten out of the city is because they'd sort of angered a sky god or a god of the sky um, in such a way that it was like you know let's just cut fit, cut bait and get out of here um, they just severed all ties with the city and abandoned it rather than stay here drawing the ire of the of the god of the skies um and that actually may explain why birds hate them so much <laughs> um, is that 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 history um which i really kind of like just as a so possibly neither. so yeah there's potentially sort of arrows pointed in three directions with regards to what to do. I don't know that anybody but Wynn has necessarily... My impression was that right now Wynn is the only one 
has necessarily noticed the thing with the birds and the fact that the that Sifle may maybe may be around. Um, you know, providing that uh, that that classic um, fellowship trope of we know what we need to do. You go here. You go there. Where the hell is Win? Cut to Win doing something else entirely because, um, you know, or whatever. But that obviously doesn't need to be the way it is. Opportunities there, or we or we can speak up and say, "Hey guys, look." Um, I think that's most everything. I think that's most everything. So, uh, guards are approaching. Uh, you guys are. Let me think. He. Mm, here, you guys are right about here in this section of the city. Margie, I don't know if you were, we, you weren't here when we introduced nope. the, the goofy city map. I, I haven't been here for, for several weeks. Yeah, so. so the city is, I mean, the key is, I basically rolled the dice and then here's the key to the city, the the, the map key. Um, but you mm -hmm. guys are in this area. The Emerald Pit is basically south and somewhat centrally located, which is kind of, where the city's at um the mayor mayoral estates are over here oh. uh, and uh margie is afk while uh she phone? answers the phone from her Ph brother phones are ringing oh my god is it apparently also located across the uh obstacle course um and I would say the marching is probably coming from the direction of. Uh, actually, no, it's probably coming from from the south also. So. From the Emerald Pit. From the well, the center of the sort of the center of town. Call okay. it the center of town. Um, how much is actually? I gotta think about that. Well, actually, or you guys can think about it, but. We can get into that now, but it, we can get into that when we get closer. But um, I'm trying to think what what that sort of area of the, the district might look like. So I'm trying to decide if Emerald Pit is ominous or not. Well, if that's the center, if that's the center of town, and and we know that there's some uh, Emerald Heart involved in in the well, city. You're right. That's pretty ominous. Crystal, crystal-based powers. That's not going to be any surprise whatsoever. Um, the city, uh, crystal uh, change cross is pretty well known. Uh, so, I mean, certainly it's not any great stretch to say, well, we know that this is where the center is at. That kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of the, uh, lore that could be declared about lots of pieces of the city because I'm, I'm I literally put down cool names and haven't put a lot of I haven't staked a lot of territory with regards to what I think any of that necessarily means so by the way I, I did uh, I did put a link out on the roll 20 to James's uh, campfire tale that went the, into the story of the the, the sky god the and, sky and god. Yeah. Oh, the oh here and and uh, chains cross yeah I kind of want to tie it to well. I know where I know where um, during the flashback, Sifle was sent by the Overlord to see what could be done or made use of out of the device, which you'll note is also a key on the map. So, you know, let that percolate around in the back of your head, and in any way that might tie into lore that sort of thing i realize you've burned up all your creative juices on nanowrimo already today but keep them going <laughs> oh and to answer your question your your possibly rhetorical question from er, that i saw earlier this morning dave it does not it does not count to your overall word count if you rewrite everything but it does count to the fact that you did work so i disagree but <laughs> 
if the word count doesn't go up, it doesn't increase your word count. But but I wrote words. Yes, so, so you did work. I, if I write words and know that they're going to get thrown away, it's still writing words from a from a from a NaNoWriMo perspective. Oh, yeah, as long as you didn't delete the old ones. I did not delete the old oh, ones. There you go. They, 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 show, they show up in the total word count for the document. I just have them in strikeout font. Jesus, okay. The question <laughs> is, does do the notes that you're writing up for this count? No. No. <laughs> no. As much as you might want them to. As much as I might have many times in the past have wanted them to. Um, no. Anyway. Um, with the guards approaching. I don't want to be the one who's like points a finger and says something. But with the guards booted feet approaching. And this probably like almost... You know, it's like, like, I hope nothing goes wrong with the airplane while we're flying in it. And suddenly engine starts to whine and you all kind of look at, you know, why did you have to say that? It's kind of like, you know, what, what are the leaders doing about this? And suddenly you hear the marted, you know, uh, marching of booted feet coming. Um, there can be a certain amount of sort of self-aware irony of like, well, that was unfortunately timed. Um who, please feel free to speak up, feels as though they would do something. And if so, what as the marching approaches? We'll just see what happens. Or is this where wind slips away? I don't know. So um, I was going to say earlier that there's a, um, a list of suggested NPCs that a couple of us had put together that might be interesting to uh, view the the city through the through the lens of, and one of them is um, a kid sister character who tags along with the city guard or other people. Um, so if you don't want this to turn into an instant fight or you want to draw attention to um, what sort of influence is being put on the people with swords here? Uh, oh, you have at least one way to do that. That's interesting. I like that. It, uh, thank you for the link. I didn't see this, and I apologize. Um, so I don't get the impression that we're going to just, like, Roll initiative and start a fight with these guys. No. So, so I, well, this is I'm talking to the group here as a whole. Yeah. Uh, so I agree. My question is, what what do you folks think is is an interesting approach to 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 this? And based on that, I think whoever whoever best exemplifies that approach is going to probably step forward. Yeah. I, I was saying no, not to say well no, um, just to let you know that I don't particularly have any investment personally in saying no i want you guys to fight these guys um i mean uh carabas's Car Car impulse would be i'll bet you we can lead them on a merry chase through town and then when they're all tired we can go over and knock them over so or simply walk away from them because that's that, that that's his main battle tactic anyway so <laughs> Dave, just to just to clarify, the the option you are suggesting is scampering. <laughs> yes, scampering would be involved. I'm imagining the old Scooby Doo like the hallway. <laughs> yes, the hallway with people going back and forth through the hallway, running into each other in the middle, turning around and running. Yes. I mean, when I say scampering, that's usually what I mean. <laughs> Okay, so we have the comedy option. I mean, I, I leave it. Leave it, I, it, it, it. It doesn't necessarily have to be. That wouldn't necessarily have to be run as comedy. That could literally be a, you know, we continue to be seen by them and then run off before they can get there. Um, it, it's it's a little bit more difficult given that they know the city and we don't. But you know, hey, we're heroes. Yeah. 
Well, um, that makes it a funner option. Yeah. yeah. You you yeah. literally said it's Scooby Doo, so that's why I said comedy option. I mean, I, 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 yes. Scooby did solve a problem by summoning Cthulhu in the most recent incarnation of this show. So, um, well, okay, an elder god. Carabas does not recommend that. No. Um, don't you yeah, have I, a don't Carabas? Don't you have a keep them? I just want to verify. Not oh yeah, I've got I've got I've got oodles, and I'm away from my keyboard at the moment but i've got oodles of you know keep them busy you know if i keep them busy i can sting like a bee you know if i sting like a bee i can do three extra things but um, one of them was like lead them like basically off scene off scene yes yeah. i believe and i do have that one you now. basically have like the exit left pursued by bear where you and the bear yeah. are both removed from the scene conveniently for a while um kind of deal which is certainly i mean that's played for laughs or not it's a good way to get the things out of the way let me just um, confirm that. Rowan, there may be some kind of... I think you've always had that. I think that's just part of your move. But um, Rowan, I mean, the uh, uh, a, a contingent of heavily influenced people are coming, so that might be something you could almost smell on the air kind of a deal. Or, well, whatever. Call your senses whatever they will be. Um, I, love the, I love the sort of adopted little sister of the of the of the guard tagging along um certainly strikes me as the kind of thing that either uh uh annie or even really virens would notice just because of the uh, it strikes me as being somewhat atypical thing to spot um tailing along side of a of a guard contingent um <clears throat> rowan would possibly may also possibly notice like Although she's along with them, she doesn't have the same influences on her that they do. Um, I have th there's all kinds of stuff, but uh, it really kind of, to a certain extent, to my mind at least, it, it it again kind of boils down a little bit to you know who goes first. We don't need to have sorted out in actual spoken dialogue that everybody has compared notes and knows about the various things. It could, I mean, Carabas, as an example, can be presumed to go, you know, you truck down whoever's messing with these people or, you know, if, if they're already after the heart of the city, I'll keep the guards busy and go herring off into the crowd, you know, having thrown mud and rocks at them to get their attention. And, you know, we don't have to establish more than beyond you know beyond that that carabas knows enough to to know you know what our like sort of list of priorities might be or whatever sure but it it, it really kind of boils down to who 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 does stuff first because that is going to determine some of what uh if if for example well i i think the go ahead the most uh uh, uh straightforward method of this is rather than uh examine all of our options is yeah. We all have various options of dealing with this that we're aware of. Somebody pick one that they think is interesting. That's pretty much what I'm asking for. Yeah. 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 So I, I am perfectly happy to, and it's it's a one of the options on Sting Like a Bee. So I'm I am perfectly happy to lead these folks off on a merry chase while you guys go do something. You know. Invest. Charge I also wanted to go somewhere and, and give you some information about the city as well. So I would like to suggest if that role doesn't go completely south, that the kid sister is probably the only one who can actually keep up with you and you will eventually have to deal with her. I love that. Love it so so much. I, I, sure. as a player, I'm, I'm casting my vote for, for that. So let, let Carabas go tank us, tank these guys. <laughs> for us. Kite the, uh, kite the guards away. Kite, kite the guards away. Um, right. Okay. All right, Carabas on three, scamper. Scamper. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get back over. Sting to like it. a bee, baby. So, the basic the basic move is keep them busy, but you kind of supplant bits and pieces of that. But the basic keep them busy is when you're acting as a distraction or buy time. Roll whatever. In this case, courage. And if we flip back over to Carabas, 
Does Sting like a bee change stuff when you keep them busy? Sting. So, okay. So I'm gonna need to I'm I'm gonna need to go close to these guys. Indeed, you to, I, I, to, to qualify. And given that it's a group, I think really kind of going in amongst them is practically like really that's what close means when you're talking about a big you know this group of I uh, call it a couple dozen people or whatever. Um, choose to. Yeah, so it's the same stat. It's the same role. You just get different options. Or you get additional. So, so I can, so I can, I could do it that way mm -hmm. by doing it by doing a keep them busy, get a seven, you know, get a seven plus on the keep them busy. Yeah. Um, I could do a talk nonsense to them. And that if would I get kind a ten of keep plus, I also get a sting, sting like a bee. And that would, which wouldn't necessarily require my standing in the middle of them. When you talk sense and get a ten plus, you may also sting like a bee. I mean, you're probably still close to them. That would be sort of keep. I mean, for all intents and purposes, talk nonsense effectively sort of rather than getting the chase after you sort of pin them down. still keeps them busy. Um, it's really, I mean, I leave it entirely up to you. I'm not going to say one, you know, I can certainly envision a scenario where the guards come to a halt because in the center of the street in front of them is a cat looking very confident. Um you know, poised and, you know, obviously, you know, looking very grandiose and saying, take me to your leader because, you know, obviously you've heard of my coming and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, what or whatever, obviously. But, you know, that certainly works for me, too. There's all options. So really, again, Dave, what's happening? Where, where, what do I know of what the other people are planning on doing while I'm doing this? Because I don't want to, like, inadvertently lead the uh, guards to them. You won't. I mean... Okay. Let's, let's be. I mean, if you lead them off, you'll lead them off in a way that I. I mean, let's put this in a meta terms. If you're leading them away and you keep them busy, you're going to keep them busy in a way that keeps them busy away from the other people. So we'll make sure the other thing okay. doesn't happen. If you, okay. Because I was. Them I, down there have been talk. There have been talk about the emerald. And I had been actually going to. You know, the the obvious thing to talk nonsense about was. No, you know, I, I I'm I'm gonna. There, I mean, just because on the map there's only the one line between the yeah area, yeah, it doesn't mean that there's literally one street to go to. It's just in broad terms, how are the various districts connected to one another and in which direction? So if you you know take me to your leader and that's kind of back the direction that one of them wants to go, that's fine. They're being kept busy by you. They're not gonna. You know, you keep yeah. saying that, and the last thing I want them to do is to get all around me and take me to their leader. I'm I'm uh. saying as an example of. You were talking no, about I, like, I, you were talking about taking them, like having them go the same direction that these guys want to go, and yes, but they're still going to be occupied with you. Okay. Um, whether that's like you running through them and agitating them and running off and and doing a, a Aladdin Prince of Thieves thing through the through the stalls and market. That, that is yeah, that is that is actually more of the kind of thing I was thinking of in terms of. You know, once, you know, one step ahead of the crowd kind of the thing. I am 100% on board with that. I only talked about the other one because you had mentioned the talk nonsense, which I think is more of a stand. That's enough. Like sort yeah, of a stand one, to deliver that, nonsense kind of thing. Like, how how yes. big can I bluff? Right. Well, that, but I can still use that. Yeah. Absolutely. I, the, the, the two options I had had, one, one is like, you know, hop into the middle of them and, um, you know, say... You know, ha ha! The knight of the harbingers is here to defeat you all, and then go scampering away. And given given how harbinger seems to be something that these people are triggered by, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm hoping that will that will gather their attention with an appropriate die roll. I think and the alternative would be showing up in the streets saying, you know, thank God you're here. They're on their way to the emerald. I'll show you the way, and leave them again on a chase. I some think, direction other than where the people are going. But. I think talk nonsense has its uh, uh, point of use, but at this point, before Sting Like a Bee comes up, what you're really doing is keeping them busy. So you are sure. li okay. like so, literally keeping them busy. So, so I am literally going to. I, I will. 
once I spot whatever kind of a formation they're charging in, um, I will find some some way, probably by leaping down from from a building, um, you know, you know, second floor balcony or or an awning or something like that, yeah, um, into the middle of the formation. And um, yeah, I like I like that line about you know, haha, the knight of the harbingers is here to <laughs> you know is here to defeat you all, haha, and you know. Do do some quick keeping them busy, bounding um, bounding to, from helmet to helmet and shoulder. Bounding to shoulder. from helmet to helmet, uh, you know, and, and then gra gradually getting getting out of the pack. Ladders, you know, across, uh, you know, across little little ropes with with flags hanging down from them across the street and things sure, like that. Sure, sure. All right. Um... All right, so we're just going to do keep them busy, which is based on courage, and then uh, I'm, it's really interesting. So okay, I got it. It feels like there's two parts to this. So let me just back to the basic moves here. So both of these moves apply. Like you roll courage. Um, mm -hmm. We still look at the keep them busy thing, but then additionally to that, you also get the stuff from sting like a bee. Is how I read this, right? So if you do keep them busy and you get like yes. a seven plus, you buy some time and their attention is on you for now. But then you also get some sting like a bee options. Um, yes. The roll is the roll. So let's have some courage. Okay. Um, and depending on, on uh, I'm trying to think of if the little folk thing comes in on that as well. But let's let's go ahead and make the roll before we. Probably not. That's that's you trying to get away with something and having nobody notice. And your whole point of this is to be noticed. That's true. So. Uh, alrighty. We have an eight. All right. I succeed partially. However, that does qualify as a seven plus. Absolutely. So, so, uh, so the sting but so the sting like a bee stuff will uh Right. Come to play. Keep them busy on seven plus you buy some time and their attention is all on you for now, but they will retaliate you retaliate against you when time is up. So we'll keep that in our back pocket one way or the other. And under the sting like a bee, you uh, bleh, uh, choose one from your list of. Um, I get to choose two. Oh, you get to choose two because you've got that other um, additional. I've got, uh, yes. It all, it's, um, it's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Um, why is the choose two? Trying to reward us. It doesn't necessarily matter. I, I, I know what you're, I know. It's one of the additional things that you picked up since then. It's yeah. the what are your people thing. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, mischievous, mischievous tricksters. Right. <laughs> Thank so, you. I, um, I, had, I didn't have it scrolled down far enough. I'm assuming one of them is you get them to chase you around and you both leave the scene, but what's the other thing? Uh, I want to find out... Um, Where's, okay, now I need to look. Ah, where's the so many, so many lists speak softly reference. list. Speak softly, speak softly, speak softly. Oh, that's the wrong stuff. The speak softly list. Talk sense. And it's on the last page I look for. There we go. Um, you can just ask a question straight off the speak softly. <laughs> I mean, what I'm looking for is I want to get information about, you know, you know, who, you know, who sent them, who sent them here, and why. In other words, I want to learn a little bit more about what's going on here. You know, it, it, on the assumption these guys are are marching over here after us, um, and given the general hospital hostility of the city around us and towards us and towards our harbinger in particular. Um, um, I want to get information about that. Without whether a that's, whether that's, a, I, that could be a look, that could also be a look closely. Um, if there's a look closely, that fits better in. Um, I feel, that. No, we can say with, we can either go with, you know, what can we, what can they tell us about? Now, I don't want you to imagine you're asking the guards necessarily because that's may not be how it shakes out. You're going to get the answers. Um, what can they tell us about 
people that gave us the orders or um, what should I be wary of when dealing with them? Uh, you'll get some some answers there as well. Um, uh, uh, what, what, probably... I, I actually have some narration that will give you both if you're interested. Is that okay, Doyce? It's fine. It's fine. Please. So, Dave, tell us about the scampering across rooftops and across Please. helmets a little more. Oh, um, yeah, I, I, there, there, it's, actually, now that you've mentioned it, yeah, go, you know, cue all of the, uh, all of the Aladdin, uh, <laughs> escaping from the guard tropes. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's up ladders, you know, across, you know, across clotheslines between buildings, um, you know, the, the, the main difference from there being that in Aladdin, he's trying to get away. In this cir cir circumstance, Karabas is trying to not get caught, but not let them get discouraged. So he gets, he, he's going to play prey as well as, uh, as, as Hunter in this. A bit of the wounded bird again. Uh, A little bit. So, um, oh no, my leg, my leg! Ha! Ah, told you. And before before Bill jumps in, because I want to hear what he has to say, I will point out one thing: is that while the guards are running about and shouting and pointing and you know uh, trying to organize and and catch you in opinion and all these sorts of things, at least one time where thank you, James, where Carabas is playing possum for a moment and then you know bounds up and bounds away, you see the girl in the armor who's kind of like tagging along with this thing who's watching kind of squinting at him where he's disappearing over the edge of a rooftop rather suspiciously like you're tricking us on purpose kind of that you know she gets it even though the guards clearly don't and that we we're seeing that it's a very it's very much a disney shot of we are meant to be shown from this oh that 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 dis that disney kind of frown Raised eyebrow look. We know yeah. that we know that this one is clever and the, and and can see the trickery for what it really is, but no one's listening to her right now because she's just a kid, kind of thing. So that moment there, but then I will shut up and and Bill go. So, I I actually had in mind to cover that, but that that will I'm work sorry. just as well. You're fine. Um, so these people are probably going to be left behind, and if uh Mike James or someone else feels like volunteering like any non-humans that are part of this group um, and, and seeing if they fare better or worse than, than, than conventional humanoid guards. That's great too. I'd love to hear that. But I imagine that most of them will be big and relatively clumsy and not able to do things like duck under tables or dive through windows in the way that a catling might. I am 100% on board with that. The guards for the mayor are... Nobody can do it as a catling. <laughs> Shall we say that at least in part the mayoral guards are meant are 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 somewhat selected for the imposing and impressive appearance, uh, and that unfortunately does not lend them well to street chases of of uh, of catlings, regardless of whatever particular species they may be. They they weren't necessarily originally picked for their you know nimbleness they're not, they're not go ahead so so with that caravas comes out of you know some narrow alley um up onto a roof down uh, onto the street uh brushing himself off i'm sure as as he thinks he's done a great job and he's tackled from underneath the t uh, this table um by this little girl <laughs> and she's like i caught you and then asks so why are we chasing you? And go ahead. I think this is the person, Dave, that you get the, the speak softly question from. Exactly. Yes. yes. I fear for what they intend for my friends. They are nice people, but they aren't nice right now. She pauses in between those two lines, like for a second, because you know they're good. They're good people, and then she kind of pauses, but they aren't being very good right now. the The mayor has people in his manner that are making them do bad things. 
Are you, are you with them? And she's no, like, no, I am not here to do bad things. I am here to to help the people of the city, and to to um, heroically lead them to to fight back against. You the are getting are so much eyebrow right now. I can't even. There isn't a mathematical equation for it. You're getting so much eyebrow right now. Um, when Catling start talking about doing heroic things for the betterment of the people, um, many people automatically look a bit askance at that. Um, not least, of, <laughs> not least of all, the naturally suspicious girl. Um, so, well, I won't, I won't, I won't try to do a formal talk nonsense with her. Sure, well, I mean, um, but, but, but I'm feeling, you know, I, I, that's actually kind of a sincere uh, <laughs> sentiment there, you know. And you could probably see it. it's like, no, I'm, I'm actually serious. Um, you may not say actually, but uh, so in answer to, you know, what do I need to watch out with with these guys? Um, I, I will say, very, let me put this in a meta answer here. They're good people, but they're being made to do bad things. Even if you get them convinced, I air quote this a bit, convinced of your good intentions, about your innocence, about your just general lack of threat to the city kind of thing, you cannot trust the fact that these guards or really anyone um, under the command of the, of the of mayor and his people are going to stay on your side because direct commands to the contrary. There's not going to be any moral debate or quandary. They don't have it in them to do that level of, of, of resistance. Um, you're just, you know, as soon as somebody in charge says, kill them, they're going to do that no matter what you may have accomplished or, right. you know, had, and, and I, I say this very, you know, I, hopefully that's information you didn't have because I you know want it to be information you didn't have but it isn't like these people can't be trusted it's it's that they aren't they aren't in command they can't of their be trusted own. in not the normal way that people can't be trusted right they they uh, it isn't that they're set out to betray you it's that they aren't necessarily in full command of themselves uh, especially... Thus the they're they're nice people but they aren't behaving nicely right now yeah um, sh she. You know, she she has hope for that, but um, she's you know. Anyway, um, what do you? Uh, hmm, huh, hmm, hmm. I think so. Having you do get them out of the way, so. And we do know that they get back kind of like there will be repercussions. Uh, are you leading them? I, I mean, are you sort of leading them back and forth in the same basic district? Or are you herring off in like... Well, I, I wouldn't say necessarily in your case any particular direction because I don't think you know the city well enough. Are you just trying to lead them, you know, try to get them fairly far away, expecting to uh, dump them off? Because my, my intent here is that I'll get you in some part of the city that is going to get you in some trouble um, <laughs> as the as the eight um, if you head that direction. Otherwise, um, probably. So so where I'm going if, with if, this is. No, I, 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 so, so I mean, my answer kind of gets back to my earlier question, uh -huh. which is, if I have any idea where the rest of the group is going, I'm taking these guys in the opposite direction. Yeah. I don't... If I don't, I will keep them in the same general spot where they are so that the rest of the fellowship can get to where, go off to wherever they're going and not be followed. Right, but your moves being what they are and the city being what it is, I have no problem with you starting here and having you finally losing them and finding yourself in a bit of an odd, uh, uh, not so great location like here. I don't care. I mean, it doesn't matter to me and, sure. and, and how you flow chart it. You're just like, why is this place so misty? And why do these lilacs look like they're trying to kill me? Uh, whatever. Um, or 
So I, I leave this as a, actually, maybe a question to the rest of the party. What would you rather see? Um, a, the, the dodging round of the guards is going swimmingly until the people in the area unexpectedly join in to help. Um, not all of them, but, you know, the more tainted ones. Or um, we, we find Ooh. out about a particularly, uh, a, a, a less... Uh, uh, savory part of the city that Carabas finds himself in uh, to his detriment. And uh, when I say all of you, I, I include Dave in that. You know, so everything's going fine. I'm concentrating on the guards until a couple of the merchants throw a tarp over me and say, we've got him over here! And, you know. I, I personally like seeing Carabas stay free and just freak him out a little bit. So less savory areas of the city. Like the like yeah, find out some more cool stuff about the city kind of a thing also is kinda of neat. Um, any other thoughts? Some place some place you know, for him that just means something gets him dirty. <laughs> I, I I also think that we need to saddle him with this little girl because he needs to be responsible for someone. <laughs> yeah, since he blew it so severely on being responsible for the innkeeper's family. I feel like this Aww. is karma coming back to haunt him, okay? Just I like that. I like that. <laughs> Okay. Um, in that case, I feel like da, 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 da. I'm looking. Okay, so either I'm thinking. I think the twin nests probably either the twin. Well, I'm thinking either the twin nests are like you were in the lilacs and everything was fine. And then the guards are coming and she's like, no, you ha don't go in there. And like chasing after you and you find yourself in the plague zone. Um, but. Yeah, let's go with the fog with the with the twin nests. I have no idea what's down there. But. Um, so if I can narrate it, if, if I can narrate a bit of how that kind of how we get there a little bit, if that's I'm okay. going to put a suggestion for the twin nests into roll twenty chat. Please as well. do. I'm just going to get us up to the front door, basically. Um, so my thought is, uh, uh, or my imagery of this is, this this goes on for a bit, um, and you can. <laughs> I don't, how does, how does Carabas generally, I mean, does he, you know, thank you for the lovely conversation, doffs his hat and takes off from the girl. Um, and she keeps cropping up over and over again. And she's annoyingly difficult to shake. Um, I like that. You okay. know, it's, it's, you know, he, he'll be very, he'll be very polite and gallant to her. Um, the first time <laughs> and, you know, the, the second time and it, you know, the, by the by, the third or fourth time, as as the comedy bit continues, exasperation you know, like, intensifies. You know, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Um, where he keeps thinking, it's like, ah, I finally, you know, dodged, you know, uh, you know, sh shucked off the guards and that, you know, charming yet somewhat annoying child. It's like, hello, where, child. Do you do you even know where you're going? What? Ah, how are you following me? Um. <laughs> You know, uh, so we we find we see bits and pieces of the city. We, you know, gone through, you know, bits of the Black Web. Um, the Emerald Pit really is. I'm going to actually say a fairly nice part of the city. But in that sort of center of Manhattan kind of sense. You have you got the nice buildings, really pretty, but where you would say Central Park is at, instead what you have is really like an open space right down to, uh, uh, it's not very large, but uh, an opening that's really straight down to the heart of the rock that the city is, is on. Um, there's a lot of decorations around, a lot of facades and that sort of thing to really draw the eye away from it, but you, you can't avoid spotting that that's really something pretty uh but continuing down from there because the guards uh, unfortunately there's more guards and the city guards start to pick up some of this and some of the city it's there's almost like a a, a matrix level thing of um you're occasionally picking up 
the, the city folk, there's certain of the city folk that just care way too much about the fact that you're dodging these guards and are getting very angry about it. Um, so you're, that's still happening, but it's not been enough to catch you so far. You find yourself on the south side of the island, uh, south side of the city, deeper fog, easier to lose people, and um, but still not this damnable goal. And now it's to the point where... And yet you're, here we are, you're Bob. Just, yeah, you're here stomp, we are. You're stomping along, and she's coming afterwards, like sort of peppering you with various questions, like, who are those other people that you were with? I wasn't with anyone. I, you were with. It was like there was a man in a robe, and he's, he was, you know, is he a wizard? And um, why did you have so many horses with you? Why do you need so many horses? Do you even ride a horse? Um, you know, blah, 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 blah. It continues on like this as we come our way up towards... Uh, the twins' nest, and I'm gonna I write a dog. I I had a pet dog once. He was. What, what is your dog's name? Tell me all about your dog. Oh, I haven't seen Lady Hawk in so long. The drink of your most it is a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. I think we watched it maybe a year ago or so, and and it it still it's... holds still holds up except for some of the musical elements are very much of their time. Well, it's I mean, it's one of our occasional anniversary or Valentine's Day shows to watch. Ooh, ooh, I like where Bill's going with that. Uh, the last paragraph that he wrote in there was sort of his pitch on the twin, the twin nests. Uh, interesting, interesting. I like that a lot. I have to fiddle with that a little bit. I gotta go back. Um, there the because of where I work, there's a lot of movie posters basically everywhere in the building where I work. And one of them is a beautiful uh, Lady Hawk poster from that era when everything was done in like all the, all the movie posters were sort of like practically oil paintings or watercolors or something like that. And uh, uh, just a, just a gorgeous, beautiful, big Lady Hawk poster with this, you know, fantastic art and just an impossible, um, Oh, Isabeau, you know. Isabeau. Got that movie. Yeah. Soundtrack notwithstanding. What a movie. Anyway. Okay. From your, from the perspective of the rest of the fellowship, Carabas, you know. What was, jaunty tip of the hat uh, uh, don't wait up. I'll take care of these. Don't wait up. And, and goes bounding off into the crowd or what, what was his parting shot over his shoulder? Is he now see how a cattling does it. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, that's delicious. Um, Okay. I want to put, I want to put, since she hasn't been here for a couple of weeks, I want to kind of put Anne a little bit front and center. So if you would. No! If, if you would, everyone, as, as Carabas goes bounding off and the guards are shouting and crying out and, and shouting orders back and forth and generally chaos is building up. Um, Sort of describe yourself, either in attitude or, I guess attitude probably more than anything else, as you think Anne would see you in that moment, What you know, whatever your mind happens to be on or anything like that, um, who you're looking at, what you're looking at, what you're doing, something like that from Anne's point of view. Um, so, you know, as she's taking stock of all these people, I don't want to speak for anybody, so I'm kind of curious. Uh, Virens, if you would go first um i think that he would probably come off as someone who was ready to present himself either for uh 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 shall we say escort to some place or for a possible fight but someone cl clearly ready to confront a potentially hostile situation now being confused because <laughs> the booted you know the booted feet of to running is like well now what <laughs> I, I don't have I was all ready for a conflict. What about Rowan? Um, 
That's a good question. I'm, I'm well, curious if it's like if he's flummoxed by this or if it's like, oh, well, Carabas is taking care of that. And now I'm going to ponder and ponderables with this other these other problems that I have. Like, it's just I, I can now entirely put the guards out of my mind because Carabas is handling it. Well, I can trust take care of us in a tight situation. So I feel like uh, he is perfectly he is he is perfectly fine with what he is. So doing. the Mariel guards are literally out of sight, out of mind. Um. Now that Carabas is gun bounding off into the crowd to take care of them. So what is he doing? I mean, is he navel gazing or or <laughs> frowning, into, frowning into the distance or peering suspiciously at the crowds around him or or option well, option? Q. I think last time we kind of got the idea that uh, the uh, uh, what is it? The Emerald Pit was kind of the important part of the city, so... Definitely part of the... I mean, if, if the Overlord is going to do something with the source of the... the Like, the main source of, of power in the city, it's got to have something to do with the pit. Um, because that yeah. is really... That's the... That's the, literally the beating heart of the, of the flying part of the city, anyway. Well, that seems like the sort of place we should be, then. So you're basically sort of orienting yourself, taking, taking, you know, you know, figuring out which direction is which, and and are you saying anything to anybody at this point? Uh, A word or two? Uh, you know what? Yes, it's like, all right, Caravas has bought us a, you know, bought us an opportunity here. Let's not waste it. Okay, um, win. In this moment, like, you know, the guards are taken care of. Rowan's clearly getting ready to head south. I'm going to say that this... So, when I say south, the Emerald Pit is here? It's, blah, moving the map. 16. And you guys are up in this area, so basically he's pointing his staff southward. The bird activity over this way. Um, so... Clearly, Rowan's figured out what he's doing. Carabas taking the thing. Viren's is probably going to go where, you know, he seems a bit flummoxed by the uh, suddenly sudden shift in the flow of events. What when Anne looks at Win? What is what is she seeing? Um. Win is appearing. Uh, quite distracted, looking over at in some random direction, and will probably need some prompting to move away from the spot where the sea guards were. Would you, do you think it's fair to say, if nobody says anything or does anything with wind, but Rowan goes continue, you know? You know heads out Viren follows in kind that you're likely just to be left here standing in the standing in the crowd looking off into the distance yes okay <laughs> i just i i want to set like because Anne would pick up at least that much i think of like unless somebody tug does something with him we're gonna wander off and when will still just be gonna here. stay here yeah well, they're just gonna stay here um I have to. I, I have a. I have a quick. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't break the flow too much. Two quick things about. Um, well, probably one just quick thing about pronouns. Um, my uh, McDonald's is doing the the Happy Meal toys kind of thing, and they're doing like a 20th anniversary or 40th anniversary of Happy Meal toys or something, which is basically their excuse to toss into the bags. Any toys that they have, left over. whatever that they haven't shifted out of inventory forever. <laughs> so my kids inexplicably like got in their last stop at McDonald's, like a stuffed platypus that is not a Phineas and Ferb reference as near as I can tell. And a Bugs Bunny in a basketball uniform, like about to slam dunk in a little <laughs> basketball thing. And, 
maybe this is bad parenting on my part, lack of social, la lack of, uh, of pop media, pop culture exposure. My kids have no idea who Bugs Bunny is. At, oh. Like at all? No, they. I yep. know we have the DVDs of Looney Tunes somewhere. I'm just saying, she, my six-year-old, has no, no data. Point of reference. No point of reference. No data on Bugs Bunny, and it's on the table. My son pulls it out and sets it down, and it's they're doing some kind of basketball thing, and it. I think, but but she doesn't even really recognize necessarily what he was meant to be doing, and she goes, "What is he?" What is she? Who is that? That's Bugs Bunny. What is she? What is he? And she goes, I don't know whether that's a he or a she, so I'm just going to say they until I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. nice Ooh. damn job, kiddo. Nice. Yep. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I'm not going to gender Bugs Bunny until I know more. Um, to be fair, Bugs Bunny is such it's, a, it's like, a little gender chaotic, fluid. Chaotic, gender <laughs> fluid creature. I mean, what what yeah what's your gender hurricane um anyway but i just i thought of that right then uh re remembering again getting back to wins uh pronouns um okay so having this information and uh rowan is probably proceeding uh with the expectation that people are carrying one behind you also have uh i wouldn't say an entourage but you've got most of the pack animals with you, the uh, uh, the arbalists. Are, I mean, there's still a bit of a bubble around you guys because you're not the you're a fairly noticeable group. You've got a couple of fennec foxes. I mean, it's a weird. I've got to make this. This has got to be a weird kind of world. Where we're a parade. Giant, let's, let's just put it, we're, yeah. we are a parade. <laughs> but you know, an orc walks in with a with a warg. It's noteworthy, but not unique. Um, the giant fennec foxes, while certainly uh, remarkable and, and possibly never before seen there, in most cases are going to be like, well, that's the weirdest thing I've seen this month, but not the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Um, but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Um, so you've got that going on. Uh, uh, I... I Absent other input, you may you may be able to assume that Virens is going to go kind of go well. I okay, and kind of shrug and follow Rowan. But Rowan's setting up. What do you do or say or whether it's to call Rowan back to kind of get everybody on the right, same page or just follow him and you know, let Win sort himself out or or nudge Virens to get him back on. Like what do you or go off and do something else? Tomorrow? I don't know. But what do you do? Right. So I think we need to at least uh, leave leave this spot. Obviously, wherever we are, we're not going to be subtle, um, you know, unless we, you know, send send all the animals off or, you know, do something a lot more uh, distinct. Let's say. Yeah, you need to find uh, a place to put them up or put them put them out of out of view out of easy view you so to give you a quick thing uh the the easternmost six sort of the landing fields of the city one of the landing fields to get you know where the airships sort of set down is also the lilac so the whole kind of open field is a lot of like gorse bushes and hawthorn and lilacs and just sort of wild shrubbery of various kinds where areas have been cleared for ships to set down and pathways and so forth but it's also like kind of open field with with bushes and 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 hedges and and various things set about i mean is it is it like is is it at all like the the village green or is it just much less a, tan an intentional wild spot much less much less uh uh uh, uh groom than the than the village green the areas where it's been cut back for ships to done they, they, to land they haven't tried to clear the whole thing because it's convenient to have sort of these natural barriers between where maybe one ship is set down and another one has just because you can kind of say like you know this is this is a landing spot a, a specific location um so it hasn't been uh uh 
cleared up. I mean, that's kind of where you guys had set down the rest of the, the rest of the stuff. You kind of went up through uh, that black three and then up into 16 uh, where the markets and stuff are at the black uh, web is, is really just sort of the nest of, of markets and that sort of thing. Um, but just to give you a general idea. There's places in the city that at least in my mind are quiet enough or abandoned enough where one could put highly noticeable livestock i'm not saying that's the first thing you go and do but if it if it there there are certainly places in the city and not least a bitch the landing fields where you know you could kind of get out of the way of heavy traffic and say all of you stay put here and that really wouldn't be difficult so to speak I, i'm not saying okay. that as an option i'm just giving you that extra information anyway okay. so but right now at this moment, the potential for the group to end up heading in uh, almost as many different directions as there are people in the in the group is, is high. Is high. So, right. uh, and 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 of course, you know, Anne is a natural herder, so <laughs> um, I will, you know, I I will try and keep keep the uh, you know keep keep the group together. Um, well, well, sort of keeping an eye out on places where, um, where we might draw less attention. I, I mean, it's it. Are, are we making a beeline for for the pit? Is that what it feels like? It kind of feels like Rowan is heading straight for probably this one of the most central areas of the city. Um, like, well, we know there's going to be something happening there. We might as well head right there, and that okay. May not. I mean, you're you're awfully noticeable, right? So maybe okay. finding some place to become less noticeable first might. But that's certainly one thing, right? And the and and uh, uh, Viren's little pet crossbowman is sort of unhelpfully like, if you'd like me to stand rear guard and stay out here amongst all these people with their nice heavy purses and very little yeah. sense of self-preservation i'll be happy to do so it's really <laughs> i might even be able to get together a little you know i think i may have forgotten a little uh, uh some extra funds that i had along that might be able to help us uh put ourselves up at a very nice inn if you just give me an hour or so to find it in my pocket <laughs> i feel really quite at home here it's almost as though i've never left uh red valley uh, yeah exactly um somehow i don't think that that uh our companion, the orc, would approve. Um, okay, so it's, what I will do it's is... Like, it's like a kind of hunting. I am hunting the elusive mm -hmm. money pouch. Purse. Purse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we don't have enough problems as it is right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do two things. One is... Um, um, let me think of how I want to put this. Um, yeah. So I think what we want to do is we obviously don't want to to leave Wynn behind um, with our mage running off. Um, Catelyn can take care of himself. Um, <laughs> so... Um, that leaves, um, let's see, Bill. If I if I make directions towards Win to gather her up, will you be willing um, to to do okay. so? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, I will stomp forward a bit so that I'm I'm um, I'm even even with our lovely mage and and suggest that um, you know. We we are a bit conspicuous, you know. Perhaps we could um, take care of that first before. May, maybe maybe um, you know walk there through you know go go through the lilacs. Lilacs, lilacs, lilacs yeah. both lilacs. There's a couple of oh. lilacs. This is the landing pad lilacs, and then this is another one that's sort of. Uh, okay, uh, and so we're. I'm sorry. Remind me, we're at which you're kind dice? Of up north up here. Up on the uh, six, the, the northernmost sixteen N, the Black Web sort of okay. mercantile area. Um, 
Easiest place. Well, I'm thinking the blue six, but yeah, because there's less around it. But are we going to have trouble if we go through the temple district? Nah, you came back through. You went through that area in the first place. Um, okay. It's less. There's it. The traffic fades away a bit. Um, okay. But there's it's a some. Little wider. There's some. There's some wider thoroughfares where people who land and bring stuff in the city are going to head towards the black web anyway. So okay. there's some streets where it's just expected to be fairly high, somewhat weird looking traffic, you know, okay. outsiders and that sort of thing. And you're not going to draw as much attention heading back that way. So you're saying double back to the lilacs, um, right. find a place where we can kind of be out of the way and then. At, at least reduce the size of, of the, the parade. Rowan, you you have an Anne in your way, and she's talking, she's talking sense. <laughs> Damn her! <laughs> I'm not even saying that she's doing the move. I'm just saying she's without even sense. making you roll. <laughs> she's just talking sense at you. Well. Know that I mean I suppose there's a I mean there is a move but yeah. she's she's wrangling you yeah I I feel like I'm getting wrangled here <laughs> so I'm not saying we can't go I'm just saying that let's let's reduce our footprint before we do okay uh, unless you think that we need you know five horses two Fenix you know a riding dog. <laughs> And a, a cow, a wolf. and a crossbowman, and uh... <laughs> four golly birds, three friends. <laughs> I, I, and and Nunez's cow. Uh... <laughs> I personally take offense. I blend. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. practically a native already. So yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Step one. Uh, when we are done in Chains Crossing, is get some companions that we can trust to 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 get the animals to someplace safe. <laughs> I feel as though that assessment is both fair and entirely unwarranted. Um, uh, um, unlike crossbow me. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and the truth is that if it was urgent, I could send. I you know. I could actually probably send the Phoenix and have them herd everybody to where I want them oh, to go. Yeah, certainly. I mean, but since it's not urgent, I think that would be more disturbing than us walking through with them if if there just was like a parade of animals walking towards the greens. Uh, I mean, personally, <laughs> I am very uh, amused by the thought of some phoenix and some horses walking up to a stable and the stable hands all looking at them very odd and then one of the phoenix just puts down a little sack of money in front of it and kind of looks at them expectantly and they're like all right looks like they're paid for all right. <laughs> or better yet that the phoenix are sort of dragging by the collar of his shirt and barto the crossbowman, and like just sort of tugging him along <laughs> Uh, he like, is their money sack. Let go of me! <laughs> and they finally do, and he's like, "Yes, well, apparently these these th apparently you've been selected. Could you please put these up?" And they nudge him again. Yes, and here's the money. You know. Uh, and one more time, and I'll be staying in the front hayloft. And be <laughs> um, that yeah, that could certainly be done. But in this case, you can kind of. Uh, anyway, we can... I, I, I'm hoping that it doesn't come to that, and that we can just kind of make a little bit of a detour around to, right. to get them. And they'll certainly, you know, they're, 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 I'm not going to make you guys like, make sure that there's whatever there's, uh, <clears throat> you don't need to, you don't need to find a babysitter before you can go out for the night. Um, in any no, case, the are the babysitters. assuming that Rowan is amenable to a quick detour back to someplace where you can get some of your entourage out of the way, um, then you can, head on really straight from the lilacs towards the center of town somewhat less burdened yeah burdened um i will say now with that said i i mean uh, i would assume 
file. I, I shouldn't assume, but I certainly will understand if Bill would prefer to have the the wolf along with him because it is part of his stuff. Uh, if it's for staying uh, concealed, I think it's fine. And if, if uh, Grey Claw goes off, it does something else. Yeah, you certainly so. have enough stuff anyway. So um, got that going on for you too. And that gives him something to do. Uh, when are you allowing yourself to be ushered along or, or you say, you know, carry on without me. I want to go invest. I want to go check something out or something else. Or do you even notice? As you're being ushered along. Um. There was a... I, Go ahead. No. Uh, I think for the moment, I allow myself to be ushered on okay i will just periodic periodically ask as as we're moving along through this it's like you know sort of the uh when are you still with everybody or or you know we uh, lost you yet did we lose you yet um because that is i mean the birds are definitely out there the birds are definitely moving not quickly uh but they're definitely not sticking in one place um which is you know extra bit of information there um and uh, I certainly feel as though my my assessment of these characters is that they don't suffer especially horribly by being off on their lonesome for a for an encounter. So, um, which is neither here nor there. Um, it they benefit hugely by not splitting the party, but I don't think they suffer especially by not being with everybody. Um, anyway. So, uh, right, relatively untraveled, heavily traveled part of the lilacs, uh, animals, uh, 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 drop tide, um, you know, feed sacks on for the horses, uh, you know, Fenix scene to wolf, you know, Talk instru to. instructed not to eat the horses, um, he knows that one already. I know, exactly. Um, that sort of thing. You guys off. Um, so. Phoenix fin can go off and hunt, or the wolf can go off and hunt, but not all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye on things. Uh, and from there, really, it's it's it, it, it's a more indirect route, but it still kind of leads you uh, fairly directly, uh, or gives you a straight shot sort of towards the center of town, too. Again, from the lilacs sort of landing, you know, a... Uh, uh, Landing fields. Uh, there's at least one major thoroughfare through there where there's more traffic of a outsider's sort, you know, coming into the city. It less so because this is a more well-to-do area, but there's still like pretty major thoroughfare there where no one looks too askance at the idea that there's people who are definitely from out out of town, you know, coming in because this is just where. Uh, some of the traffic is at. Um, <clears throat> Rowan, uh, as you're approaching, sort of coming into this area, the 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 power that keeps the island aloft is, I mean, it's always kind of like a constant. Are, are you a poor person who, like myself, suffers from tinnitus? Uh, yes, occasionally. Okay. So just this is, being on the city is like sort of constant white noise. Mm -hmm. um, that certainly intensifies in this area. That's just the nature of any of any of the flying islands or anything like that. There's well, that's not entirely true. It's more true. Hmm. Actually, there may not be extra information. Have you ever been on the islands that are sort of naturally aloft? Have you ever found a, a reason or a means to be up on the the ones that just sort of go up? Uh, I would say yes. Okay. Um, what you found, and I don't know that anybody that whether or not 
there's ever been any real delving into the whys and wherefores of this. But the artificially lofted islands or the islands that have been adapted after having like sort of uh, colonized are noisier than the ones that are just naturally aloft and kind of largely left to their own devices. And I don't want to say uninhabited, but just not messed with are mm -hmm. not nearly as noisy. Um, this is the opposite of that. You know, it's been engineered within an inch of its existence and chained down on top of that. Um, so it's somewhere just short of the background noise sound of a bearing going out all the time um, for you. And, they, uh, and it's worse as you get closer to sort of the open uh, space above uh, the central thing. So there's a lot of just general noise in the area. Um, if it's the tapping on the back of the head thing, I, I, uh, I am a huge fan. Um, but otherwise, you tell. No, it's totally that. Oh, I love it. It, it works great. Um, mm -hmm. I can't do it right now because my ears are covered, but, um. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so... The potential, there, there could have been tampering here, thinking uh, there could be activities going on in the area. There could just be, it could be more subtle. How do you go about determining if there's any, like, sort of, what do you do? I mean, we, there, there's potentially minions of the Overlord about. They would have to be doing something around this area, you would think. Um doing whatever they did to drop an island out of the sky in the past or whatever they did in red valley you can't imagine it was if it subtle? was if it was quick it couldn't be subtle if it was remotely subtle it wouldn't have been quick and it would and it and it, in both cases it would have had to have been roughly uh, set up whatever they did would had have been would have had to have been set up close to the source, right? So, what now? Like, what do you, what do you, how do you figure out what's next with that? Um, so I suppose if it has to be close to the source, can we get to the source? You can probably get, there's buildings sort of around. And facades. There may be, there has to be tunnels and stuff where they'd be accept, where they'd be assess, accessible. Who can say? Wynn might be able to say. I don't know. Wynn was ever here though. I think Wynn sort of city was never actually really here before. Nope. Yeah. So really, be what you read or what your experience was in the past or that kind of thing. Speak, speak lore. Was it speak? Let's uh, speak lore. Well, uh, in that case, let me Command lore. Uh, see if I can uh, 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 determine some info. Okay. And then we'll go from there. All right. So let's talk to this. Uh, let's talk to this floating island. Oh, nice. I like that. The rock talking thing. Very cool. Uh huh. So what do you have to do? You, is that just it lets you use a regular move, but you get to do it to a rock, or is it a different move entirely, like an actual unique uh, move itself? Yeah, no, it is. Uh, you speak softly with the earth. That is, that is so cool. It's honestly a very kind of a fate sort of thing. Like take a regular move that you're a regular thing that you're totally used to doing, just do it to something that's totally bizarre to do it to. Yeah. Um, so I imagine once we get into this area it's just sort of like a bit of walking around trying to find things rowan gets frustrated it's like looks at everybody else holds up a finger it's like one moment it pulls off of, a glove reaches just, down into some dirt and is like i'll be a moment just kind of are you like just middle of the street kind of in a back alley uh 
one of those little weirdly shaped, we don't know what else to do with it. So look, you get a triangular park that's a hundred feet across. Um, yeah, you know, that one sounds interesting. So just a yes. weird little, weird little, weirdly shaped park with like, let's, we can't make anything useful out of that. Nobody wants to put a building here. So let's plop a statue in the center of it, make a little park with two benches and a statue. Go. Um, Someone donated it to the city. Because they couldn't figure out how to build anything other than a hut on it. Um, anyway, all right. So, yes, that. And speak softly. Now, speaking to rocks wasn't a trick that you – that wasn't the one that you taught Anne. The no, rock correct. part of it. That was a different thing. Speaking right. with animals is, is the trick he taught me. All right. Uh -huh. Then I guess you're just rolling – are you rolling wisdom? Or is that yep. also turn sideways? Okay. Yep. Then, then and uh, let's see. I'm just uh, 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 double checking something really quick here. All right. Ah, there we go. All right. Uh, so I am going to, uh, 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 with uh, Rammel, going to have him uh, help me out with this one uh, via his one with the earth move, or stat. Okay, so what is, uh, remind me how that's going to, is that just give it's, you advantage? Uh, yeah, because it's uh, bound in service. When you call upon a companion for help, you may damage one of their stats to create advantage related to the stat. Lovely. Uh, I love that. That's great. That's a that's a really great way to get advantage with that. And and you know, taking having Rommel kind of is he sort of like you put your hand on the ground and he sort of perches on your hand, or is he up on your shoulder whispering in your ear, or? Uh, I feel like he's also like on the ground, like he crawled down my arm, and now both of us are kind of like reaching out to the earth because really cool. you know, much like a, a, a an air bison is one with the air. I like it. Uh, this is one with the earth. So this is this is your uh Okay. Badger yeah. moles. Badger moles. And I like I'm glad you had advantage, because otherwise yeah, I, it would have gotten ugly. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh under the basic moves we had a we got it was it an eight? No. An eight? On Seven. a nine Seven. minus. All right, nine minus so you may roll wisdom. Three questions from the list. On nine months, one of their answers is not helpful. Either they refuse to answer or they reveal a terrible truth you didn't want to hear. <laughs> their choice. And I'm, I think I have another thing that I need to take under. Sorry. I got another thing I need to take into consideration here. So give me just a short moment. So uh, I guess my first one is is asking uh, the island. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, the core of all of this? Or you know, what's keeping you aloft? <laughs> okay. Well, I want to make sure that I mean some of this is sort of already sort of established in the lore, so I want to make sure that I've got uh, an answer here that kind of gives us a bit more. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, In a lot of cases with these islands, uh, any of the ones that have been, you know, deemed habitable, useful, that kind of thing, what you get is a mass of stone 
that there are many seams, uh, uh, veins, sorry, veins of crystal that are that run throughout the entire the entire thing and sort of collectively can be naturally charged or are naturally charged in such a way as to provide loft that gets engineered in many cases um bits of you know uh, offsetting mass trimmed away that kind of thing but generally speaking the veins are, are you know what get the job done it, it's it's spread out um in a couple of specific instances you can think of smaller masses um the size of very large building that that kind of thing they'll like big crystals are sort of brought in and 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 sort of embedded in geometrically significant ways um to sort of make that happen but again still spread out um that is not at all what is done with this island for all intents and purposes um all of the power the lifting power of this thing has been centralized into one crystal um that's simplifying it somewhat what they've done is it's thousands of smaller ones that have been brought together and fused or were brought together and fused this is a ridiculous this by by your standards of power use and 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 you know uh, uh wizardry and just generally the crystal craft as you understand it um represents what would have been a massive undertaking of decades to even fuse them together let alone to get them to actually like get it to all actually work without the the lifting power all centered into one specific point just causing the whole freaking island to fall apart um but yeah that's that that emerald center whether or not it's an actual you know whatever um it's not all one crystal but the central lifting thing is one great crystal and then the entire encompassing space it's within is also lined with crystals so it's almost like uh you know how magnets act when they're they've got you got the opposing ends pointed at each other and they repulse each other um it's like that but like with this thing inside of a walled a repulse a, a wall that repulses it um like a, a bubble kind of a thing that's pushing back against it um honestly almost like you know, kind of almost gyroscopic in the, in the way that it was put together uh huge amounts of just and it's on the one hand it's like oh this is brilliant and for that to have been done this the amount of skill and elegance yes but even then would not have worked without a lot of just sheer ugly brute force to lock it all into place and make it work um you're not entirely sure that it, I mean, the chains have always been kind of the myth of the chains or the story of the chains is that it's to keep, you know, the, there's so much lift to the island that we have to keep it in place and we don't want it to drift with the ley lines. So we want, and we want it to be in this one location. So we're going to chain it into place. There's a very good chance that the chains themselves are actually keeping the whole goddamn thing from flipping. Like it may not work if they aren't if it isn't chained to keep it like level. Um. So, yeah, that's kind of how the place is kind of set up. Um, you also get a really good picture kind of of the various tunnels and so forth, various access points. Um, so probably a really good idea of you know a couple different places. Pick the coolest one that you think of um, for getting down into the place unseen, whether it's you know. Uh, the basement of a of a nearby uh, uh, bar or business or uh, uh, somebody's brownstone that they don't realize has got an access point or that they do realize is an access point or a building that's actually all facade and you it looks like a very nice you know uh, 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 three three home 
like brownstone kind of thing along the street but it, any one of those doors just opens onto it's like all a false front with a false back and in the middle there's just a big ass trap door and what would be the living room that leads down into like uh a, a, a like a like a, 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 a an elevator cage that could be lowered down you know into the space below and it, nobody really realizes this nobody ever sees anybody going in and out of this big this building that's back along one street because it's it's they basically built it over top of a crack in the ground and 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 they just that's one of the ways you can get down or something like that so there's a lot of different ways in because this area of the of the city is just um really just thick with different ways to access the thing um uh, so there's a pretty good answer for that yeah so i i have an idea of where it is now oh yeah and i gotta like tell uh uh and uh when and varids this and it's just like all right you guys ready to go into some tunnels Yeah. Yeah. That's where we need to go. I'm there. All right. Hey, Island, open up me up a hole. Oh. That doesn't. I have to tell you, that doesn't exactly feel like speak softly, unless you're just like that's uh, the, that's your answer. You speak where to softly go. with the earth. You may use one of your questions to ask it to move for you. Oh, interesting. Okay. All righty then. Uh, all right. So, kind of this. Uh, oh, so we're right in the park. What's this look like? Are you just like opening like a like sort of a downward slanting? tunnel is it a hole you're dropping down into or is there a tunnel directly underneath this that goes crossways that you can drop down into or or uh yeah i feel like it's just like a, a slope tunnel to kind okay. of like you know until you reach some other space that already exists yep slide in interesting okay does it do you does it close up after or you just this is just now a new thing that exists I was gonna. I was gonna use my third question to have it close back up. Interesting. Okay. Um. Let me look. The reason I'm the reason I'm pausing on this is I am. Our answer is that one of these things is not helpful, or that you reveal a terrible truth you didn't want to hear, and I'm trying to figure out. Um. Since that first answer was kind of laying out how everything is how do we how does this how does this tunneling thing turn a bit sideways for you or it's not or, it's not going to open it, back up for us <laughs> <laughs> some you find out something you really didn't want to some sort of terrible some sort of terrible truth um, what happened when could, you tell a cave to close in on yourself <laughs> I was going to say, uh, it could always be wherever this tunnel leads out to, whoever's going down there first is going to find some people who aren't very happy for them to be suddenly showing up. That certainly seems likely. Because, you know, why should this be different from any other tunnel where we've be, been down? Yeah, there's certainly that as well. Um, so... Trying to remember. Okay. So yeah, what? downward slide, kind of the kind of slope that you would slide down, yeah. Um, and it kind of. Um, It, it goes down far enough to open up into sort of an like a uh, one of the many not not too far beneath the the this street level of the thing. Um, the island is largely rock, so most of this is going to be uh, uh, carved rock. 
Um, but it's been carved and it's been this way for a really long time. So it isn't rough hewn or anything like that. It's been cut and in, in many places. In fact, a along this tunnel that you open up into, aside from the rather rough hole that you slid down kind of into, um, not only has the, have the walls been sort of cut through, you know, the stone been cut through for the tunnel, but somebody took the time at some point to sort of fashion the cut to make it look kind of a brick pattern um much like the the buildings up above and that sort of thing um not because it's meant to fool the eye or anything but just because you know they felt like it um various patterns um i say bricks but uh just various kind of geometric shapes and patterns that sort of thing have been sort of cut into the brickwork or the stone the stone cut just for the sake of doing it um For, for Rowan, that sort of background noise, whine, yet stronger, the kind of thing that you know, it seems to be coming through the, ro the rock and almost kind of got in your teeth a little bit. Um, the kind of thing that, like, your jaws hurt because I've had earbuds in for six, for, for like eight hours. You know, just, you're just tired. It's that kind of ache of you know joints in your head being kind of worn on for everybody else um there's a sense of pressure in the air a real closeness um not a staleness but just a real sense uh for those of you who ever for those characters i should say that have ever really experienced claustrophobia there's there's a strong sense of that um for those who wouldn't necessarily have experienced that or don't seem necessarily prone to it, just a real sense of oppression, just, just, you know, uh, particularly aware of this you know, pressure of stone, even though you're not really that far below the surface. Um, you're is also, this, is this the same as, as what we were feeling in the population? You know, was, was this similar to what was affecting no. the population or is this different? Uh, the answer is best answered by Rowan, but yes and no. It's what the effect on the population was meant to feel like. Like, whoever was doing it to the population was kind of making it feel like, like, oh, this is background, this is just a side effect of being around the crystals. So it was meant to kind of feel like this, but it was a it was a fake. So for Rowan, it's like, oh, this is what this, whoever was doing this was meaning to make this feel like, but this is the real deal. Um, for you guys, I would say, yeah, there is that kind of, we, the, the, the constant unfriendly regard from the populace of the city weirdly feels a lot like just this kind of pressure that you're feeling now just from the tunnel itself and the space down here. Um, and it's not very far. The, the tunnel is quite good size. I would say two or three, well, three or four people could probably walk abreast. And it's fairly tall. So it's, it's meant to like have big things or many people uh, up and down it. Um, there's greenish light from both directions, but more prominently uh, uh, really you know, uh, one direction or the other and kind of a, a downward angle in the tunnel. So head somewhat downward and the light is brighter, which seems really kind of weird and backwards. Like you're heading down and away from where you think of as a light source being from. And that's still where, where the brighter light is, is coming from. Um, there's not just that subliminal, Rowan sensing wine background noise. There's also just noise down here. There's where it doesn't really seem like there ought to be, but there's there's definitely some loud metallic uh, clacks. 
just very loud uh, uh, almost like hammer on anvil kind of sounds but they're very very sharp like if the hammer hit the anvil and the am and the anvil cracked it's it's it doesn't have that anvil ring that ringing anvil sound it's it's the sound of of, of it's, it's a very dead metal sound um it's a bigger sound than this but the best thing i i and i don't know a lot about this but i do know uh uh the uh, like aluminum bats that you have for like softball leagues and stuff like that if you know what you're <laughs> listening for you know when the bat is broken on the inside because it sounds different when it hits the ball it doesn't ring it 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 just it's it's got a dead metal sound to it and also if you happen to be the one swinging the bat it fucking hurts like it, it all the spring is out of it and it's got a sound more like that but bigger it's a much bigger uh uh sound than that um so uh down towards the light uh wh where are you immediately heading rowan um well immediately i think like the last thing before rowan kind of like slips down the hole into the thing uh if i can say that really quick is mm, sure. so one of my one of my spells is to deliver a message through mysterious means okay and i think that's going to be to call out to carabas and just say uh, we're heading. We're heading into the tunnels beneath the city. Uh, you can meet us there. Okay. <laughs> sure. He'll be fine. Tunnels under the city. Got it. I, I, no doubt there's signs. How does that? Does that? Does that? How does that message come to him? Like whispers uh, on the wind. A mouth forms out of the, the ground. Um, you know. Whispers on the uh, wind. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I will. I'm sorry. What, what was the answer? Whispers on the wind. Okay. Sounds like. So we'll get to that actually arriving to Carabas here in a second. Um, where are we at here on time? Oh, there goes one more life. <laughs> Carabas thought he was hidden, and then all of a sudden you hear somebody whispering into his ear. It's just like, hey, Carabas. We're heading into the tunnels under the city. Join us. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Okay, so the, uh, back, back to the other thing is, so having sent that message and sliding down the thing and closing up the space behind you as, after you arrive, um, you're in the tunnel, brighter light one direction, kind of uh, the tunnel heading up and up and away doesn't go up at a very strong, but like kind of angling, kind of curving left. Uh, if you were to turn and walk away from the brighter light, kind of curving, sort of leftward, um, constantly, but not particularly sharp turn, just a, a constant sort of orbital kind of roundness to it or, yeah, or spiral. Uh, spiral sure um somewhat up uh or further down brighter you know those are kind of your options so what 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 do you what do you how are you leading folks because i feel like you'd be the one sort of deciding which direction to go I guess whichever direction makes the the noise in my teeth hot louder. That would definitely be down and towards the light. When are you still with them? Yes. Okay. Just double checking. Yeah. Because <laughs> we could certainly like I just you know and we cut back to Win who's still standing up in the up in the thing having watched the whole shut and go nodding to him nodding to themselves and then heading off through the city. Anyway, um, all right. So heading downward. It doesn't immediately, it isn't like it dead ends into an opening, but what you, as it's sort of curving down into the right, there's an opening on your left, or sorry, on your right, 
sort of on the inner curve of the of the passageway that is a, a fairly large archway that opens out onto like a brass catwalk. So like and everything that that entails where the where the the flooring of the catwalk is is a metal grating kind of a thing the railing is metal um and it's apparently been kind of like bolted mounted kind of onto the rock um the glow being the fact that the whole hole the the opening is really surrounded by crystals and really all the walls there but it opens out into the central space the tunnel continues and continues to spiral i love that word dave thank you very much downward and to the right and looking through this opening whether or not you go out onto the catwalk or anything like that you can see out into the main space you're still quite high up but you can easily imagine this tunnel being one that sort of follows the the open space all the way around gradually heading downward and opening at various points um but staying relatively close to the wall of the place um and sort of following it downward, around and downward as it as it goes. Does that make sense? Is that questions yeah. about that? Um, there's definitely, and Rowan, you would pick this up too, although you may not have noticed it until now because of all the other sensory stuff that's going on with you. There's definitely noise out there. There's definitely activity out there. It's not a lot, but what there is is pretty loud um so kind of the options would be check it out descend further and then check dowsing rod throw carabas in to investigate he's not here never mind that's not a... yay <laughs> what do you think well unless anybody wants to go investigate unless anyone wants to pull a carabas i think Let's just keep going and take a look. Um, yes. So that's where you continue on here. Virens, thought any any modifications to that is I mean, are you peeking, looking out, following steadfastly? I mean, I agree that the last time we went through a, a tunnel, you know, bad things happened, so Virens is still ready for some kind of ambush or surprise or something like that, but uh, he trusts Rowan to know where he's going, and he's gonna follow. Okay. Uh, uh, what about what about Win and Anne um, as you're passing this opening and heading? Yeah, as Rowan's passing the opening and heading, I mean, he ponders it for a hot second, but then continues on. Uh, uh, any? What are you doing, or is it just follow on and let him, you know, trust the Rowan? I, I would like to make sure that the Rowan is not too tunnel vision, so I'm going to be, you know, keeping keeping an eye out anywhere where he that that isn't the downward path. <laughs> does that, that does that mean like taking a, a quick step and glance out onto the catwalk and looking looking into the space? Um, since he doesn't seem to want to do that just yet, or or is it more just? Yeah, I, I want to make sure there's nothing okay. down there that's going to come up behind us. Or know what's coming as you're heading that general direction. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably then let's have you look closely, which is a okay. sense roll. Yeah, it's a sense roll. Uh, Unless you have something that changes that up. I don't think I do on that one. Everything else I do. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. All right. So uh, give us a then. So give us a sense roll, and we'll take a look at look closely. There's some questions you can ask here as well. Oops. Hold on a second. I was trying to pop that out, and it didn't work. All right. Hang on a sec. I wasn't prepared to roll. That's all right. All right. Sense. Oh, I didn't like that. All right. A nine. 
Uh, look closely on a nine or less. You find one. Okay, so seven plus ask three questions from the list on the look closely on a nine minus one of these questions we're going to find out kind of the hard way um really anyone can answer this uh uh the way it's you know as it kind of spell out here and there is another little thing i need to kind of keep in mind with this as well but um so you got your questions there, like what's going on here, uh, something hidden or out yeah. of place, uh, all that kind of stuff. Right. Oh, I forgot that that makes that messy. Hang on a second. Ah! <sighs> Sorry. I pulled it up and made it big, and everything else went big. Yikes. Let's try this again. Okay, so in the basic moves... Um, I still can't read it there. If you, uh, go, if so, you, go, if you go into the journal, like, uh, the journal tab in Roll20, there's under handouts, the basic moves thing, and you can click on that image and it kind of gets big and maybe might be easier to read. I don't know. It's easy for me ah, to read. I pushed the wrong one. I ah. pushed the little thing that was in, in large, not the click on it anywhere and enlarge it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so first thing I want to ask is, um, you know, it, is there anything, is there anything, you know, harmful or dangerous, um, here? Um, you know, is there something hidden or out of space? Okay. And then a general, my third one would be, um, kind of a, you know, what, what's, what's going on here? What do my senses tell me? Okay. All right. Um, so the first one is like, what's, is it, what's, what, what here is dangerous? Is there anything dangerous here? Okay. Or harmful? Yes. Uh, yes. That'll be, that'll be the very, very straightforward answer. Um, or more dangerous than it dangerous other than what I expected to be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's still quite far down. Probably if this were a, a building, um, maybe 10 stories further down. So what does that work out to? So, you know, hundred meters further down so a pretty good distance uh on the catwalks you can see uh someone standing down there and you're pretty sure it's it's Eki of born air um and he's doing something to the wall down there um he's got uh his hands out he's got rowan does he have a staff is it is it do all the harbingers have staves or is it sort of a no because he had a sword didn't he he was yep, sort of it's yeah a, it's a a, a pick what works for you sort of thing okay gotcha all right so he's got his sword out and his one hand out and he's almost in sort of a fencing stance kind of um not a good fencing stance, although he is a good fencer, but this particular stance is more about the magic than anything else. And he's he's not near the wall, but you see him kind of poised like this, and he's very, very methodically and somewhat almost slowly, but very forcefully, you know, goes into sort of a thrust thing, and he it's it's very uh, uh, methodical and and pointed and that you know it's just almost a caricature of a thrust and he thrusts into the open air but in the direction of the wall and you hear that sort of metallic dead metal thwack sound and a and a probably a a three meter wide almost perfectly hex shaped uh, area on the crystals goes black 
or goes dead. I don't want to say black like it's gold black, but like he he kills the light from from a section of the crystals just and you can look around and there's like a very regular pattern of these dead spots um at the level that he's at and you can actually see it in in several you know he's been at this a while you wouldn't even imagine he's been at it for a while today but like for some time um it's not everywhere because the place is freaking enormous but it's a significant chunk of real estate down there has got these sort of spaced out patterns of dead spots that he's sort of methodically applying to the to the wall down there and it looks um, like it's a specific pattern yeah well it's not, not like a it's not a complex pattern it's lines and about every uh uh 10 meters or so there's another uh, 10 meters is too much 15 feet or so five meters every five meters or so there's another dead spot okay um Seven meters. Five five seems too little. Ten seems too much. Called seven. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell from here. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much regular. There is a bit of a spiral. If you were to look at it in the rows, like in the in the rows, that he's doing it. The rows aren't like the dead spots aren't direct. Like a dead spot on the level that he's at isn't directly below the level above it. So it's not like okay. perfect columns of these. Dead it's kind of a spirally look to that as well. You figure he's probably done five or six of these catwalk layer levels all the way around. So, so it looks like he's he's weakening as opposed to making a, a fault. Yes. Yeah. And in a very specific in, in very specific points. Um, you're not there's I don't want to make it seem as though he's done like five like layers in like. There are patterns to it in addition to this that are, I don't know, Rowan would figure out what it is kind of a thing. But in the same way that people would make a schematic drawing of like a magnetic uh, uh, pattern and, you know, make some slashes in there and that wouldn't mean anything to you. It's like this is there's probably some reason for this, but I don't you know, whatever. He's doing something and he clearly has a, 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 a plan in mind for what he's not randomly doing it by any stretch of the imagination. Got it. Um, he's not just sort of walking along going, well, I've taken about eight or nine steps and now I'm just going to do another one. And he's just pacing along and randomly popping it. It's he's got there's something there. Yeah, he's definitely doing a, a specific thing. It's not the only noise down there. He's talking with somebody. Um, uh, so there he's not alone. And he's doing something. So is there danger? Yes. Um, and what looks suspicious? Well, that. Um, what was the third thing you were kind of? It's it's the the first question. You know what's what's going on here? What do my senses tell me? Uh, so I think that's a little bit the. Yeah, well, other... yeah. There's there's certainly some. I feel like there's. Um, <laughs> We could switch that up for what will they do next if if that sounds more interesting. Well, uh, what will they do next? It seems as though they're quite far away from being where – I mean, you can't imagine what he's done while it's may not, maybe not great for the long longevity of the whole arrangement. You can't imagine that what he's done is significant enough to – like he's probably got a lot – it feels to you as though he'd have a long ways to go to get where he needs to go. Okay. Um, uh, whether or not that's actually true, but that's that's Anne's read on the. And it looks like he's just doing it, sort of in. I, I won't say casually, but it's 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 not like he's rushing to do it. It's no, not like he's, he's being very methodical about it. Yeah, you know, looks like he's you know. I'm. He's he's take he's reaching a crescendo or anything like that. Yeah, he's not trying to. Uh, he's not rushing. Uh. As I've said before, um, and, and this you know sort of established fact about him, he, he is the most skilled of the harbingers. He's not the most and, powerful, and he's not weak, but he's not the most powerful. He's not. I you mean, know, so he's going to he's going to husband his power and his strength and be precise about this and do it in a way that doesn't leave him, you know, sweating and gasping and 
you know. Well, she, he doesn't appear to me to be somebody who likes to sweat anyways. No, there's also that. Yes. So. Yes. One one mustn't perspire. What are we, mud people? Come on. Uh, oh, excuse me. In any case. Um, so that's going on. Uh, and I will ask when kind of the same sort of question, like as you're telling me back in there, whether or not you catch up to folks and let them know what's going on there with that. Um, I'll ask when also uh, if if what, if anything, are you doing um, other than just following along? Uh, I actually uh, am not there. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're just funny <laughs> <out there. laughs> so that answers that question. Where, where, where approximately are you, or what are your surroundings? Um, God, I don't know where if, anything if, is. You could simply say city street, and that's fine, or or a different tunnel, or tell me where you're headed. Um. I am going to the old temple district. Oh, because okay. I believe that that is likely where, or if I can tell that Sifley is here, then she can tell that I am here. Okay. And that is likely a spot that, I don't know. A old temple district, by definition, means something that would have been... I mean, the odds of that being somewhat tied to your people is very high. Yeah. So, okay. You're heading for the old temple district. Gotcha. Um, if, she know, if I know she's here, then she'll know I'm here. And then we'll be here. And also, there's stuff in the old temple district. Anyway, okay, cool. So... We have Rowan heading downward, Viren's dutifully with him, Anne checking this, ch checking the, checking corners, and noting with some dismay that Eki is there, and then ducking back and possibly hurrying after, at least catching up, glancing over to say, "I spotted Win," and Win moving through the city uh oh through I, the wall i like the shot of i like the shot of uh of wind like walking away from that that park that we saw and and into the city and as the camera as he's going into the street and the camera sort of panning up to see the larger city that he's walking into it pans up until we see that pretty much in the direction that he's kind of going that that those birds um so at least no if nothing else, that that when that they are headed in the direction of, if not the actual physical direction, the symbolic direction of a confrontation with Sifle. Um and Carabas. So back to Carabas and back to the twin nests. Um, now this, you want to talk about some place to park your pets, is a quiet part of the city. Uh, Not although in a good way. That, that doesn't necessarily make it a good place to park your pets. Um, Dave. that's definitely not the Lady Hog poster that I was talking about, but, uh, thank you for showing me all of the really cool Lady Hog posters because they're so awesome. Um, anyway. So where, let me go back up, okay. So from the fog walk, which is uh, a part of the city that, uh, you know, kind of lies really at the, really on the edge of the um, island and is n so named, uh, not because they're really kind of a, perpetual fog here, not because of any natural meteorological 
activity, but some weird interaction between like the magic of the island, um, sort of warming up the air, uh, that kind of thing over in the city in itself because it's up high in the mountains. Why isn't everybody freezing? Why isn't everyone like, you know, dealing with, um, you know, terribly uncomfortable temperatures? Well, partly that's something the island is doing. And as a result, you get this kind of weird fog thing in certain areas. And it's perpetual enough here that it's just like that. Um, what are the kind of buildings in the fog walk area, I wonder? Like, what do they do in a place where it's almost always like... What was that area of Paragon City that was always in fog because it was like all the undead and everything? Oh, oh yeah. Where, where yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, um... Uh, Dark Astoria. Dark Astoria, yeah, like, what where do you, all the ghosts are. Yeah, like, what do you do with an area of the city that's sort of like... I would say 60 to 70 percent of the time, it you know, like shrouded in fog. Storage warehouses is it, is it an area for for low is it lower income like places for those who can't afford better? Uh, a good place for the city jail. Ooh, a prison. I kind of like that. So like kind of slums, a prison, a place where people go to do things that they don't want people to be able to easily see. Black market. Black market. Love it. Love it. Beautiful. Black market right next to the prison I find just delicious. Um, and we, you know... The girl saying, we shouldn't be here. Well, no, you shouldn't be here. You're young, and this place is clearly unsavory. Um, what is she pestering you about, like, at this moment, like, as you're you're going through here? Is she... What, what, what annoying question is she peppering you with at this point? Do they have fog where you come from? Does the, does the fog make your hair damp? It looks like it would make it very damp. Um, do you prefer the fog or the sun? You look like someone who might be like you know interested in kind of in the in the darkness and the shadows. Or do you prefer to like lie out in the sun like other like cats do? I mean, on the one hand, she wants you to talk about yourself. Which is, you know, which is so always careless. desirable. But on the other hand, it's more it's, fun it's when they don't want time. you. It's not a good time. I mean, just because we are still being, you know, pursued by the guards... And, That's the intent. Yeah, um, and, and 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 additional followers on, which are uh, making it more difficult. And yeah, this area, uh, this is the kind of area that the more heavily tainted tend to accumulate, settle, precipitate. Um, Great. So the area itself just strikes you as being far more depressing, uh, antagonistic, <laughs> antagonistic. Um, it just there's a there's a sense of menace. Um, there are there is a sound of like guard activity in the area. Um, Nothing immediately nearby, but that doesn't mean there aren't people that are nearby. And there's, uh, you don't, you can't really decide what's more worrisome. Uh, the people who see you coming, you know, through an alley or ducking out of an alley into the street or something like that and pulling a window, you know, pulling their windows shut are the ones who don't and are, you know, a floor up and watching very, attentively which direction you're you know heading um uh through the thing and there's some shadows in the streets and sort of thing and she's noticing this and quieting down once you kind of point out this you know it's really not the time um 
if we if we if we get along a little bit further we'll be out in twin nests it's the fog there's no fog there and that would be better there's other things but you might be good with other sorts of things creatures uh it's it's actually just along this way but as she's saying this you're seeing some shadows and so forth in the fog that are I don't want to say closing in, but looming out of the the fog, like in the street ahead, like some folks that are sort of stepped out of doorways. Okay, so the, it, it does resemble folks sort of kind of yeah. stepping out of, you know. Yeah, okay. people like stepping out of doorways and that sort of thing and sort of getting in your path. Um, like kind of. Whether or not they're part of the folks that are, they're probably not part of the folks that are pursuing you, but they're definitely someone who's decided that they're going to make this into a toll road or something to that effect. Or maybe that's where things are going to start. Who can say? Um, but yeah, there's definitely some hulking, bulky individuals um, kind of putting themselves in your path. And with a quick glance over your shoulder, you can see that things are sort of that direction in the other way now there are alleys there are routes that you could take whether or not you and the girl can both take them uh well it depends a bit um she's gone gotten quite quiet but she's not trembling uh in fact her jaw looks a bit clenched and she looks a bit angry about the whole thing like she's she's you know, so she's probably up. comparable size to me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. That you know that uh, nine to ten year old kid kind of size, four foot and given, change. Yeah, you know, given given that she successfully followed me ever so far, um, you you have some trust that unless you get truly ridiculous, she ought to be able to keep up. Yes. Um, Oi there, Catling. Her... Little furball. Yes. New in town. You're looking for a place to stay? I can help you get. No, some place. actually, we were ju uh, we were just uh, passing through. Um, I, I I'm getting a guided tour of your lovely city. Um, it's it's definitely it's definitely a place. Hmm. I don't think that one really knows the area around here. I'll be happy to give you a tour. If you're getting a guided tour, I'm sure you'd be willing to pay a small fee for that sort of thing. We can uh, no, all actually, show you it was, around. It, 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 it's, it's a new complimentary program that the city is offering visitors. Um, I signed up for it uh, <laughs> weeks ago, and... Um, you know, uh, it's, I have to say, it's a little rough, needs some work, but um, I'm assured that, um, you know, uh, there'll be a chance for feedback at the end, and um, and a, 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 they promised me a 35mm camera, too, if I just sat through to the very end of the presentation. <laughs> uh, uh, is this your spew not no, it's not spew nonsense, talk nonsense? I, I it certainly sure. Like it. I'm trying. I'm trying to convince him to that you've lost. If, all if there's any chance that his, that his that his intents are are semi legit, to convince him that uh, that that he should back off. That 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 you know, not interested. You know, moving right along. No, nothing to see here. I'm no far threat, too crazy to no be useful. I mean, I'm far too pretty to be useful. Or crazy. Um, or crazy, that too. Um, so if that's if that's a talk sense, talk well, nonsense. Well, it's a talk nonsense thing. By telling grandiose lies with a straight face, um, sure. When you talk sense. Oh my... Okay. So. Sure. Roll courage. Let's see how that goes. So, so I guess, I guess so. Talking sense is the is the general speaking, you know, speaking with convic conviction to ask someone for help. Um. Um. What? 
in the, in, or or to to sway them to a course of action, which basically is, in this case you know, would leave, be like leave us alone. We're all fine here. Carry on. You don't need to mess with us. Um, yeah. You know, and this one might be simply like going along the rounds of this one's crazy. Let's just leave him be. Um, sure. So let's let's go with talk. Essentially, the nonsense thing is going on there. Um, okay. Impress, dazzle, or trick them. But in this case, you're just rolling courage regardless, so it doesn't really matter. Well, with the talk, with the the talk nonsense, it's by telling grandiose just lies with a straight face. Yeah, so it, it's all based on courage in any case. So I don't imagine she can assist in this. Um. Or that I can draw on her to assist. Although that would destroy. Does that damage a bond? I believe it has to damage a bond, and I don't. I mean, you, you could certainly okay. have formed a bond Never with mind. her, but let, let's. Uh, I certainly think a bond is, a bond with her is forthcoming. I certainly feel like there's a bond between us that kind of keeps us together in ways that. It's called sheer stubbornness, and you don't control it yet. Um, <laughs> oh, good lord! What happened? Hey, there we go. Oh, my little. Oh, hang on. My. The roll uh, popped out. The roll bar like popped out for me here. Super weird. All right. Um, all right. Twelve. Lovely. Look at that. Um, um, so with that, since um, since I talked nonsense, um, you get to sting like a bee. Well, I, I, I get I get a success on the talk sense. Talk sense. They'll do as I, they'll do as I ask the best of their ability with with none of the disadvantages that come with that. Yeah. Plus, I can also sting like a bee. Yep. And in this case, sting like a bee then lets you. Um. um hmm. Get them talking. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean, th looking closely and getting them talking. Both of the. I mean, I don't know if you. I don't know if they necessarily have anything worth stealing, but um, uh, and I don't know that you want them to chase I, you around. Yeah, but... I, no, I don't want them to chase me around and, and have them leave the scene with me. I already have a, a crew doing that for me. Yeah. Um, who I assume will be showing up any time. Um, I'm, the or, or, or are we at, are we are we at the point where I have shaken them? You know, where I've finally decided I can shake them. And... This was this was sort of. Uh, these guys were sort of the complication of the of the seven eight of like oh, okay. things finally coming due for your. Uh, they they finally chased me into an area where the uh, the the locals were were more of a threat. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so in that case, if I'm looking at maybe you I'll get a, for, maybe I'll ask a question. You uh, can have I, maybe one I'll do either one of the lists. I mean, if you yeah, deal exactly. Well. I get one. I can do one from both yep, because one, I get to choose yep. two. Yep, exactly. And we'll probably stop right after your questions here. I will tell you right. this right now: one of these answers is going to be a lie. I'm not telling you which one, but one of them is going to be not true. Due to uh, uh, due to it being a complication, uh, or due no, to it being the 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 the, the final retribution from uh, the whispering dude makes. Uh, corrupts these sorts of results sometimes when his when his influence is oh. high um and he gets to make one of your answers be a lie sometimes okay sometimes um and this is a situation this is a area where his influence has settled rather thickly um in terms of the yes. that he's laid upon the area so well, since i'm intending on you know exiting left pursued by bear mm -hmm. um what what can they tell me about? This is in the speak softly area. Mm -hmm. um, about tunnels under the city. I mean, tunnels under the city. There's the sewers, but they just dump out onto the edge of the city. There aren't any. I mean, we're a bloody floating rock, boy. I mean, there's. What are you crazy? There's no. There's no tunnels that you of any. Unless you want I was to... promised in the tour that there was going to be tour. You promised me there was going to be tours of tunnels under the city. Uh, Sorry, she... I'm deeply disappointed, and and it will reflect in my review. She worked. She was like working her mouth, like ba ba 
but you know, like, and honestly, you don't know whether she's acting or just legitimately like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, uh, yeah, there okay. are there are no tunnels underneath the city other than the sewer, unless you're talking about tunnels that that you know, stormwater and shit flows out of and dumps out of the side of the rocks. We're in the bloody air. Where could there possibly be tunnels? You know, you're mad. So that's fine. I'm I'm fine with leaving that impression. Mm. Um, and that was off of speak softly. Yeah, that was from the speak softly. Um, in the look closely. Uh, you've already kind of you've, you've already kind of told me that the that the whisperer's influence is kind of part. Of, big part of what's going on here yeah uh, um you, what looks suspicious might be useful too though i can give you something that you could i, I can give you something pretty oh, actionable out of what looks sure so 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 is there something hidden in place what looks suspicious while they're talking in this this big gruff you know burly you know <laughs> while they're talking <laughs> uh while that one is while you're keeping them busy with that chit chat and stuff and, and they're like a couple of them are like oh this is useless and you know stupid at the same time the ones that seem the most aggro um don't seem to be well they're playing along they're backing off like everybody else is saying it's not important but you very distinctly or rather i don't know if you're meant to see this but you know, cat's eyes. Um, two of them are like sort of in the back and kind of talking to each other. Uh, there's a few hand gestures in your general direction. Um, they nod to each other. And one of them takes off at a pretty like, I know exactly, they're not at a, not at a run, but not leaving here, but def, but going somewhere they're not leaving. They're going somewhere. Right. Someone's off to report. Okay. And whoever they're headed to report to, given their general attitude to Rowan, your group, this sort of thing, the fact that they seem to have this sort of really annoyingly group think this is a very uncat like thing this really annoying kind of group think about like what's to be done and what to do next and blah 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 uh whoever they're reporting to is probably a somebody best not being reported to but probably somebody that you're looking might be looking for that the group in general might be interested in so um there's some information there um they're going to, I mean, they've, you've convinced them that you're mad or useless, or they're at least, sorry, I keep sneezing. Um, they're at least willing to uh, play along with that um, or back off until they know more or something. You haven't triggered their full aggro because you're not specifically who they're looking for. Um, but given that, Making your excuses, heading out at a slightly oblique angle, and then a couple of quick corners, you could probably follow that that guy and figure out where he's going, if you're so inclined. And I leave you there to figure out what it is that you want to do with that information. Okay? Okay. Cool? All right. So, where we've left it, when heading towards the old temple district... Uh, so kind of let me get back to the map here for a second. Uh, heading towards the uh, old temple district by by way of this general direction. Um, Carabas and company. Did we give her a name? She had a name, didn't she? I gave her the name Rumi, but you can call her what you like. Okay. Um, but Win and company, kind of down here on the border between uh the Fog Walk and the Twin Nests. And uh, with somebody possibly 
reporting on their whereabouts to party parts party or parties unknown and virens rowan annie underneath the emerald heart no the emerald pit or within the emerald pit heading downwards with uh Eki of Bornair nearby so oh and uh just to complicate things Carabas, as you see this guy heading off well no you'd already gotten the voice you'd already gotten the, the the hint about the about the tunnel so we don't need to drop that on there so we've got that also in the back of your mind like meet us in the tunnels and like well there are no tunnels sure okay. right so not sure what to do about that although you haven't talked to the girl about that so she might know more anyway yes. so that's where we be now that we are done with what is that session 12 yep okay we're closing up on the end of the evening so uh do we want to take stock of the evening or start up the next session by taking having t by taking stock of this i would say given the hour why don't we go ahead and, and plan on doing that first thing next time but is everyone I okay with that kind of like look back and take stock on what we did and start off the next one with with that as a sort of part of the recap uh, that's fine by me okay okay cool 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 uh with that i'm gonna hit my little stop recording and that is we said session 12 session 12 yep what are we calling it do we know do we have a good pun uh the f chapter 12 the fellowship and the party split um <laughs> um I don't know. i'm drawing a blank i'll have to think of something all right well we'll think about it in the meantime that's it <laughs>